NAD goes down, and if we if we put the NAD back up, right? So suppose there's some way of increasing the NAD levels. Have we ever seen any? Do we see any ne negative effects of that? Um, I mean, in particular, there was there's kind of like maybe it helps cancer because cancer needs NAD, and so if you're boosting your NAD, then it may help cancer. Yeah. So so cancer's kind of been my biggest concern, you know, going into this. And, and I think for, for a lot of people in the field, that, that definitely stands out as, as a potential risk. Um, I mean, there's reasons to think either way. So there's, there's actually a, a mouse model that gets spontaneous liver cancer that turns out to be caused by NAD deficiency. And you give supplemental NAD precursors and completely cure that mouse. <laughs> you know, so there's, there's reasons to be excited that it could be an anti-cancer therapy. Um, but at the same time, you know, that we use a liver regeneration model where it, NAD, you know, makes it go faster. And that, that looks a lot like liver cancer, <laughs> you know, so you worry about in other scenarios, it, it might actually turn out to be bad. And there's evidence that it increases stem cell function. And so what sort of makes cancers resistant to therapy a lot of times is, is tumor stem cells. And so you wonder how that's going to translate into the cancer scenario. Um, so what I can say is, you know, there, there's lots of reasons to be concerned. Um, at the same time, people have done cancer models and it, so far, it doesn't seem to be a concern. We did some experiments in my own lab that aren't published specifically to try to show that it would boost cancer growth, and it didn't when we supplemented NAD levels. Um, right. So I feel a little better about that. There have been a couple of studies in mice where people have treated them through the end of their lifespan, and mice die almost exclusively of cancer. And you know, it hasn't shortened their lifespan. There hasn't been any, any indication that those mice got more cancer. Um, so I'm cautiously optimistic that this is going to, to not be a huge risk. Um, but there's certainly, you know, uh, we're, we're not ready to be confident that it's not yet. <laughs> right. Yes, no, I, I get that. Um, so one thing, do we, I mean, we, we kind of look at the NAD levels and we say, um, I guess we give mice NAD boosters and they, and they live more healthily perhaps. So do we have any confidence that higher NAD levels are related to health? Can, can we kind of compare those two in any way? Uh, I mean, in a correlative sense, they are. So, you know, there's this observation, obviously, that we're right. starting from that as you age, they go down. Um, if you exercise, they go up. Uh, if right. you calorie restrict uh, mice, the uh, NAD levels go back up. Uh, you know, so there's this uh, general feeling that you know, the, level, the level of NAD you have at a given moment seems to be correlating with how healthy overall um, you are, but um, yeah, I mean, in, in terms of what we've seen experimentally, it's in my lab, at least mostly in, uh, in different disease models and stresses, we can show that it boosts resistance. It's very hard to show that if you take a young, healthy animal that you can make them healthier, you know, by giving right. them more that, that we haven't really been able to, to prove in any experiment that I can think of. <laughs> right. Well, hopefully the a young mouse would have sufficient NAD that, so giving him excess does not help that much. NAD levels, so do we have any kind of benchmark for what would be a, a, a good NAD level? For, uh, for, I guess for a mouse would be easiest. I mean, can you look at a mouse and say, you know, I measure, okay, his NAD levels are too low. Um, yeah, for age. Right. No, um, I mean, so, so what we use basically is, is, you know, is the young controls. Right. So it's going to vary a little bit depending on what kind of diet the mouse is eating and what strain you're looking at, you know, and, and what circadian time point you're looking at. Um, and so, you know, I'd say the field as a whole is still at the stage where the, you know, the reference is young controls that were included in the same experiment. You know, and we say that, that that's the target level, <laughs> you know, and if you're substantially below that, then you're probably deficient. Um, but this is this has been a you know sort of a, a reawakening of NAD biology in general is, is that there could be an optimal level that's not um, avoiding pellagra. Right? So this right. this disease that you get from severe deficiency was kind of taken as the the benchmark, right? It was sort of how much vitamin B three do you need to get over that threshold where you no longer have this disease or at, or at risk for it? Yeah, and and that was considered good. <laughs> you know, it's, it's it's a much more recent. Uh, question to go back and say, what's the actual optimal level of NAD right. that you want to achieve? Yes. I, but you would, I mean, you would think that if we have lots of it, we have more of it when we're young, that 
it there's some purpose to that <laughs> that having more of it is good in general but but yes um yeah i mean there's you know there's there's reasons to think that there might be a a best level right because right. a lot of the enzymes that use nad um, are inhibited by NADH. You know, so the, there's a, what's called the redox ratio between the <laughs> oxidized form, which is NAD plus and the reduced form NADH. Um, and so you can imagine if, if the total pool size gets too far out of whack, you know, you can have the inhibition from NADH get really strong, <laughs> you know, because just because you know, the redox ratio hasn't shifted, but there's so much more of both. That's a <laughs> lot of NADH inhibiting some of those enzymes that are trying to use NAD. And so right. uh, yeah. chemically you can kind of imagine why you don't you don't want to go crazy and have you know 50 fold more nad <laughs> it's yeah. maybe not going to have the desired effect on some of the reactions <laughs> yes okay i can see that so i uh, it's kind of one last question in this area so you, you said you know inflammation causes uh degradation of nad but does uh like lowering of nad cause inflammation yeah. well uh, I mean, I can say one, one of the symptoms of pellagra is, is inflammation in the skin. So right. um, it, it does at some level, but there's always a bit of a chicken or the egg uh, question there. Right? So, so uh, some enzymes that are anti-inflammatory require NAD. And so you can see how having low NAD would allow those enzymes to, to be inhibited a little bit and allow inflammation to get worse. At the same time, inflammation, you know, as you just uh, reminded me, the, uh, activates this enzyme CD38 that consumes NAD. Right. And so, so there's the cycle, right? More inflammation yeah. degrades NAD, which leads to a more inflammatory state. <laughs> yeah. Suppressing inflammation you know, stops the degradation and also, um, you know, then maybe uh, reinforces the, the anti inflammatory state. <laughs> yes. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon.